Hello. Uh, I hope all of you, as always, are well and safe and healthy uh, wherever you are. Um, uh, what I wanted to... I wanted to carry on with our uh, discussion uh, about the conflict. Uh, um, and today, uh, perhaps a little bit shorter than, 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 than usual, because I know that this week is the uh, uh, the week, of course, that you are working on your uh, um, working on your, your essays, your first assignment. Um, so I'll, I'll speak quite briefly this week about Bosnia, um, talk a little bit about the, uh, um, the country itself, uh, talk about the, the complexities of the country, um, and talk a little bit about the uh, political leadership, the various factions, um, and then explain how the war began uh, in April 1992. Uh, and I, I guess that will pretty much be all, all that, I, that I talk about today. Um, but before I do, let, let's very quickly, let, let, let's recap. Um, in, in, last, in the last session, we talked, uh, um, we, we'd seen that the, the conflict that began uh, and ended in uh, Slovenia, there'd been a 10-day war uh, when the Slovenes uh, broke away, declared their independence from uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, the JNA, the Yugoslav People's Army, uh, mobilized and attempted to bring the Slovenes uh, and the Slovene Republic back into uh, um, uh, back into Yugoslavia. Now, this had been ultimately unsuccessful, um, and the reason that it was unsuccessful, uh, as we'd seen, uh, was that Milosevic, uh, um, who was now the de facto uh, leader, the most powerful person in what remained of uh, Yugoslavia, was not particularly interested in uh, forcibly holding. Uh, Slovenia uh, within the Union, uh, within Yugoslavia, or rather he had lost interest in, uh, in doing that. And, and of course the reason uh, for this was uh, uh, that there are very few, uh, uh, not a significant number of uh, Serbs within, uh, uh, within Slovenia. And uh, we'd seen that Milosevic, uh, although he had initially uh, hoped that he would become uh, something like a new Tito, uh, the most powerful figure, uh, within uh, uh, within a transformed Yugoslavia, um, he'd seen uh, with the secession out of the Union, out of Yugoslavia, of Slovenia and Croatia, uh, that that was not possible, and he had kind of changed his mind, um, moved to what we might call Plan B, uh, which was to group together uh, um, all of the Serbs uh, within uh, uh, you know some sort of expanded. A greater Serbian state. Um, and if you remember a few times, uh, we've looked at the, the ethnic map of, uh, um, of Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia, uh, and we've seen uh, um, that the, the, you know, the, the, the Serbs, first of all, were the, they, they were the largest ethnic group uh, within, uh, uh, within Yugoslavia, but second of all, they were extremely dispersed. Um, there were large uh, uh, numbers of Serbs in Croatia and large number of Serbs uh, also in Bosnia and, of course, also in places like Kosovo. Um, so so th that, that had kind of shifted. Uh, um, and as a result of that, Milosevic had been willing to abandon uh, Slovenia and focus his attentions on Croatia. And we'd seen that in Croatia, uh, there was indeed a very large number uh, uh, um, of ethnic Serbs. Um, and uh, these groups of ethnic Serbs, of course, had uh, resisted, uh, had been very resistant to uh, the Declaration of Independence, had been very resistant uh, to the notion that Croatia would break away uh, from Yugoslavia. They wanted to stay within the Union. Uh, by and large, they wanted to stay within the Union. Um, and when the Union broke up, uh, uh, their Plan B, just like Milosevic's, uh, their preference was to stay within, uh, um, uh, you know, was to, to become part of an expanded, uh, um, an expanded Serbian state. Now, the, it, it must be said, uh, of course, that the uh, the leadership of the Croatian Serbs was quite nationalistic, quite radical, uh, um, and quite close to uh, Milosevic. Uh, um, so they had been leading uh, uh, the Serbian minority towards this kind of attitude, towards this kind of position. Uh, um, by uh, depicting Tujman, depicting uh, what he was trying to do with Croatian independence as a kind of revival um, of the very worst things that had happened uh, um, uh, during the Second World War. Of course, we'd spoken, hadn't we, about how uh, um, uh, the Serbs were targeted for genocide uh, by the Croatian fascist movement, the Ustasha, and this was very much on people's minds uh, um, uh, as, as the country broke away. <clears throat> Excuse me as the country broke up uh, at the beginning of the 1990s. Um, now, the conflict had began at the end of 1991. Uh, uh, the JNA, of course, had withdrawn from Slovenia, uh, but they had regrouped, regathered uh, within, within Croatia. Uh, um, and uh, uh, um, 
Milosevic was depicting the JNA uh, as some kind of peacekeeping force, a neutral uh, uh, group, a neutral military force, which was there to kind of keep the sides uh, uh, separated. But in reality, it was, it was clear to most observers um, that the JNA had now become a tool of Milosevic um, and they would be used by him uh, to secure these kind of war aims uh, and these political aims, which is to say, keeping the Serbs uh, um, out of an independent creation, bringing them into uh, um, integrated Serbia. So the, the, uh, the, the conflict started, didn't it? And we'd, we'd seen the sort of the first phase of the conflict at the end of 1991 uh, um, in Croatia. There had been fighting in autumn and uh, 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 the winter of 1991. And in the spring uh, um, of 1992, the newly formed uh, European Union uh, managed to broker uh, uh, a ceasefire. Uh, um, uh, and um, you know the the guns fell silent, uh, but very little had been resolved. Uh, uh, Tujman was only in control of two thirds of the territory of this independent Croatian state. Um, the Serbian minority uh, was still kind of closed off from, from the Croatian state. Was still armed uh, um, and was still sort of ready uh, uh, to take up the fight again should should that happen. Um, so the the fighting stopped, but it was very clear uh, uh, that there was no kind of political resolution. Uh, to what had become a military uh, conflict. Okay, now that's where we left it at the beginning of 1992. Uh, um, and as, as this happened, uh, um, as the conflict broke out uh, and ended, in, uh, 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 as the first phase of the conflicts ended in Croatia, in Slovenia and Croatia, um, all eyes now turned to Bosnia. Um, and our eyes can turn to Bosnia as well, if you like. Uh, um, we can look at the first slide, slide number one. Uh, of the slideshow which I've posted uh, uh, on, the, on the Moodle site. Um, and it, 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 incidentally, you can probably see um, that there are uh, numbers on the, the bottom right-hand side, uh, quite small numbers, but, but those are the ones, num slide numbers that I'm uh, um, referring to. Okay, so what, what do we know about Bosnia? Uh, if we look at slide number one, um, what we know about Bosnia is the following things. Uh, um, Bosnia, uh, uh, the, the ethnic makeup uh, um, uh, the distribution of various ethnicities was enormously complicated within, uh, uh, within Bosnia. And I think I'd said a few weeks ago, hadn't I, um, that, that Yugoslavia, you know, had this kind of, you know, it was, it was, perhaps it was quite different from other post-Second World War states in Europe. Um, there are various nationalities, lots of minorities, had quite a complicated ethnic mix. Now, of all of the republics, of all of the parts of Yugoslavia, um, Bosnia had by far the most complicated mixture. And we can kind of see this on... Uh, um, the uh, um, on the slide on the first slide, uh, uh, which is a breakdown um, of the various municipalities uh, within uh, uh, within Bosnia, according to the census, I think of 1991, which was the last census uh, in, uh, uh, in, in Yugoslavia. So you can see that the ethnic mix there is extremely complicated. Uh, um, there are uh, um, I mean, I've just sort of depicted the, the three largest groups. 44% um, of the population were Bosnian Muslim, 31% were Bosnian Serb, and 17% were Bosnian Croat. And there was also other uh, uh, various nationalities. Of course, there were Roma, uh, uh, there was an infinitesimal Jewish population, although most of them had been killed during the Second World War. Uh, there were some Greek villages, uh, um, Greek uh, refugees had arrived also after the civil war in Greece. Uh, um, and there are even some Czechs and Slovaks, would you believe, uh, a very small number. Uh, um, but the main groups uh, uh, were the Bosnian Muslims, the Bosnian Serbs, uh, um, and the Bosnian Croats. Now, the Bosnian Muslims, the largest group, uh, had arrived or had sort of come to Bosnia during the period of Ottoman rule in the early modern period. Uh, um, and we'd spoken a little bit about this uh, um, in the earlier lectures on this module. I told you... Uh, um, that at various points in history, uh, um, the, you know, the, the, the Balkans have been on the front line um, of these great empires, uh, uh, the, you know, the Holy Roman Empire, the Christian Empire, um, and the Ottoman Empire, the Islamic, uh, the Islamic Empire. And the Ottoman Empire had held uh, um, uh, Bosnia for a very long period of time, uh, um, and they had left their mark uh, um, in terms of architecture, mosques, uh, medrasas, uh, uh, Islamic, Islamic, which are Islamic, uh, um, Islamic teaching colleges or Islamic schools or something like this, religious schools. Uh, um, and they had also, of course, uh, uh, a number of uh, uh, Slavs had converted uh, to Islam uh, during the period of Ottoman, uh, uh, Ottoman control. 
Now, it, it, it's kind of a strange thing because uh, the Ottoman Empire, I think I mentioned this earlier, um, was not a proselytizing empire. Um, it did not forcibly convert uh, its subjects in the way that the Holy Roman Empire, for example, had done, or the Christian empires of Europe, where they demanded uh, um, uh, that the, the, their populations uh, um, would swear religious fealty towards uh, towards towards you know, towards the, the right the right church. Uh, the Ottoman Empire did not demand of its subjects uh, uh, that they become Islamic, but that they become Muslims. Uh, um, uh, and, and so, you know, in, in most cases, in most parts of the Balkans, people didn't. Uh, but in Bosnia, uh, during the early modern period, in relatively mysterious circumstances, um, a large number of Slavic Christians, a large number of Bosnians did indeed convert uh, um, to Islam. Now, there are various reasons for this, and, and, and there's a huge discussion uh, uh, amongst historians about why this was, uh, various theories, uh, um, you know, there are various advantages uh, uh, to sort of converting to Islam uh, in terms of, uh, you, know, ec you know, financial gains, social status, and these sorts of things. Um, uh, so this is, this is sort of, you know, possibly one uh, uh, um, theory, one reason uh, uh, why Bosnians uh, did this. Now, what, what, what this meant was, if you like, two things. Um, if we jump forward now to the 1990s, uh, um, what this meant was that in Bosnia, uh, um, the largest proportion, the largest ethnic group uh, uh, were the Bosnian Muslims uh, um, at 44%. But that also meant uh, that in the eyes of many people, and particularly at this period of time, uh, um, as these sort of rising currents of nationalism uh, were sweeping through the Balkans, um, for many people, uh, uh, many Serbs and many Croats, they considered the Muslims to be something like apostates, um, you know, not, not a real religion, excuse me, not a real nationality, uh, um, a group of people who had betrayed, if you like, the true faith um, back, in the, uh, back in the Ottoman days. Um, and the Croats in Bosnia and, and the Croats elsewhere uh, would often claim uh, um, that originally the Bosnian Muslims, the Bosniaks they were called, they are called, uh, um, had been Catholics, had been Croat, uh, um, and they had turned away from the true faith, uh, uh, but possibly they could be converted back. Um, and the Serbs would make uh, uh, identical or very similar claims. Uh, they would say that actually uh, uh, these uh, Bosnian Muslims, uh, before the Ottoman Empire arrived, before these waves of conversion, um, had actually been Bosnian Serbs, uh, um, and that you know, one day they might, uh, um, uh, they might return to the true faith. And there, there, there were kind of uh, uh, waves of thinking ever since the 19th century, uh, uh, national awakeners, nationalist intellectuals, nationalist, nationally minded politicians uh, um, had always looked at the Bosnian Muslims as a sort of second class nation nationality, uh, not a genuine nationality, not a group of people who fulfilled the criteria. Uh, objectively uh, um, of a national group, uh, um, but actually a group that could be brought back to uh, uh, to what they uh, to what they what to, what to what they had once uh, to what they had once been, um, and of course these uh, uh, notions these ideas uh, would become very uh, uh, you know warlike very violent in uh, um, in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the period of conflict that was coming. Now, at the beginning of the 1990s, as I mentioned, uh, um, what, what, had, what, what happened in Bosnia, initially at least, was quite similar uh, to what had happened when Slovenia and Croatia broke away uh, uh, from the Communist Party of Yugoslavia in 1990. Um, there had also been, uh, um, in 1991, municipal and national elections, multi-party elections uh, um, in Bosnia. So, uh, you know, in Tito's time, Bosnia had been ruled uh, uh, by the Bosnian branch, the Republican branch uh, um, at the Yugoslav Communist Party, uh, um, and then uh, uh, um, as the country broke apart, as the as the as the republics uh, seceded, Slovenia and Croatia, uh, um, there were also multi-party elections, uh, multi-party elections uh, within Bosnia. Now, what I want to do is talk very briefly uh, um, about the, uh, the 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 three national groups. Uh, um, and the political factions uh, uh, that won uh, uh, that won these elections. Uh, but before I do, if you very quickly look at slide number two, uh, um, I put up a rather nice picture of uh, um, the Bosnian capital Sarajevo. I'm not sure if any of you have been to Bosnia uh, or been to Sarajevo, uh, but I highly recommend that you do. It's a very beautiful country, uh, uh, mountainous, green, have these wonderful kind of emerald green uh, 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 rivers. Uh, um, and the, uh, the, the, the capital, the national capital, Sarajevo, uh, despite the damage that had been done to the, the, the that was done 
uh, uh, to it uh, uh, during the conflict in the 1990s um, is still a remarkably beautiful place. It has this wonderful uh, um, marketplace, the Başçaşya, Turkish marketplace, uh, um, beautiful mosques, uh, but it also has these wonderful kind of Habsburg buildings and, uh, um, and these sorts of things. You can see in this image here at the bottom of the picture on the bottom left-hand side, this uh, uh, yellow building is the, uh, uh, is the city hall. Uh, uh, which has been restored since the end of the uh, since the end of the conflict. So you know, it's just just my sort of uh, uh, um, uh, work for the uh, for the Bosnian uh, for the Bosnian tourist uh, tourist board. Okay, um, so let's then move to slide number three. Uh, um, as I say, uh, let's talk about the political leaders. Let's talk about the people uh, um, who won these multi-party elections at the beginning of the nineteen nineties, and we can start with the Bosnian Muslims. Uh, um, they voted uh, uh, for a man uh, called Alia Izetbegovic. And Alia Izetbegovic was the uh, leader uh, um, of the Party of Democratic Action, uh, which is known by its uh, uh, acronym, uh, by its Bosnian acronym, the SDA, the SDA. Now, Izetbegovic uh, uh, was a relatively controversial figure. Uh, um, he had been a dissident uh, um, in uh, Tito's Yugoslavia, uh, um, um, quite, quite an older guy, uh, um, and at an early stage, uh, um, he'd got into trouble with the Tito regime uh, uh, for writing uh, uh, two uh, pamphlets which became very controversial uh, in, Tito's, uh, in Tito's Yugoslavia. One was called Islam Between East and West, the second was called The, uh, the Islamic Declaration. Now, Izabegovic had been quite a young man when he wrote those, uh, um, when he wrote those pamphlets, and he had since moderated um, his ideas and he had since kind of changed his ideas. Uh, uh, but in these pamphlets, he was kind of saying things along the line of, uh, um, you know, there was a, a, an inevitable conflict uh, between the Islamic world and the, uh, uh, um, and the Western world. Um, the co cohabitation would be quite a difficult thing. Uh, um, uh, and, and that, you know, that, that this is, these are the sort of the lessons that Bosnia might teach people, uh, um, that, 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 you know, sort of different ethnic groups, different religious groups, Muslims and Christians living together might be sort of an impossible, impossible thing to do. Now, he, he'd written those, I think, quite at quite a young age, I think in the 50s or the 60s. Um, he'd got in trouble uh, uh, with the regime for doing that. Um, and subsequently, he had sort of uh, uh, disavowed, or he'd sort of distanced himself um, and he had written some more subtle and some more moderate uh, uh, opinions, and he had become, you know, if you like, a slightly more moderate figure. Uh, but nevertheless, this early period uh, um, uh, and these kind of pronunciations that he had made uh, um, in these uh, pamphlets would really kind of come back to haunt him in the 1990s. His opponents amongst the Serbs and eventually also amongst the Croats um, would seize upon these pamphlets and they would claim that Izzet Begovic uh, was not a moderate figure. Um, Izzet Begovic was something like an Islamic fundamentalist uh, um, and that his uh, party, the SDA, uh, um, was going to lead Bosnia down the path of, uh, um, you know, of sort of uh, um, Islamic fundamentalism. Now, what I would say to that is that was a, that was a caricature um, of Izzet Begovic. Uh, um, the, 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 the general attitude, uh, the general opinion in the historiography about Izzet Begovic is he was a person who was in a very difficult position. Uh, um, uh, you know, he, he, he could see the country was breaking apart. Um, he could see that his group of people, the Bosnian Muslims, uh, um, did not have anywhere to turn outside of Bosnia, unlike the Serbs, unlike the Croats. Uh, um, uh, that it would be a very difficult, you know, future for them if they stayed within uh, Milosevic's state. Uh, um, and so he was trying to navigate extremely difficult waters, um, extremely choppy waters. Uh, um, and this is essentially, you know, a, 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 person, a, a person who found himself uh, um, in a very uh, peculiar and a very difficult position. Now, having said that, uh, um, it must be said that there were less conservative figures uh, within the SDR. Uh, uh, there were people who might have been more amenable uh, um, to the other groups, uh, to the Serbs and the Croats. Um, in particular, there was a man called uh, Adil Zulfikar Pasic, um, who had it's 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 in uh, um, it's in the uh, um, uh, it's in the Death of Yugoslavia book. So just in case you're trying to sort of work out 
how to uh, to spell or how to pronounce that name. Uh, um, but Zulfikar Pashic, uh, um, an intellectual, a member of the SDR, um, but somebody who was much more moderate, uh, uh, less conservative than Izzet Begovic. So it, it, it's, it, on the one hand, um, um, Izzet Begovic was caricatured um, and he was wrongly depicted by his political opponents. Uh, um, as a very uh, 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 sort of uh, hardline figure. But on the other hand, uh, um, he was not the softest person uh, uh, um, amongst the Bosnian Muslim uh, uh, um, uh, political leadership. There were, there were much more moderate candidates, uh, uh, but they did not get as much support. Uh, they did not become uh, um, as prominent as Izzet Begovic did. So Izzet Begovic uh, 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 became the, uh, the political uh, uh, um, spokesperson, the political leader, uh, um, of this large, largest uh, uh, group, the Bosnian Muslims. Okay, now we turn to slide number four, uh, um, a much more notorious figure, Radovan Karadzic. Uh, um, Karadzic uh, uh, was the leader at the beginning of the 1990s and throughout the war um, of the Bosnian Serb party, the SDS, the SDAS. Uh, um, and uh, Karadzic, uh, uh, a very colorful and a very unusual figure. Um, Karadzic actually by birth was a Montenegrin. Uh, um, his family were from Montenegro originally, um, and Karadzic himself uh, um, had grown up um, outside of Sarajevo uh, in Bosnia, uh, but he had come to Sarajevo as a very young man um, uh, to study at the university. He'd, be, he'd actually studied medicine. Uh, um, he'd studied in the medical faculty in Sarajevo. Now, in the context of Bosnia, um, Sarajevo, the capital, um, was always quite a cosmopolitan and a quite an urban place. Uh, um, you know, there were various uh, uh, nationalities, various ethnic groups living within Sarajevo. Uh, um, the people who lived within Sarajevo considered themselves to be maybe a little bit separate uh, um, from the people who lived in the villages and the towns outside, uh, um, outside of the capital. And perhaps they looked down on them. They looked down their noses a little bit uh, um, at people coming in. And there was kind of a sense that the Karadzic, um, although undoubtedly an intelligent and capable figure, uh, um, was nevertheless always kind of looked down, you know, the, the, the people in Sarajevo sort of looked down upon him a little bit uh, um, as this kind of son of Montenegrin peasants, um, a person who came from the village uh, um, and a person who was much more rustic, uh, uh, um, you know, not third generation, uh, um, not third generation, uh, 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 excuse me, not third generation uh, Sarajevon, uh, um, you know, somebody who sort of newly arrived and, and was perhaps not quite part of uh, um, uh, quite part of the urban uh, uh, character of um, of uh, uh, of Sarajevo. Now, as I say, Radovan Karadzic uh, studied medicine, and he graduated. He became a psych he became a psychiatrist, specialized in psychiatry, uh, um, and held various positions, including uh, uh, very briefly uh, uh, the team psycho psychiatrist for Red Star Belgrade football team. Uh, they were going through a, a series of bad results. Uh, um, and they called him Karadzic, who had some unusual and some interesting ideas uh, um, about how he might sort of prepare the team psychologically to, to win, uh, to have a winning attitude. Uh, and I think they hired him for, for a while and, uh, um, you know, their, their results did not improve. And, and, and Karadzic was, was, ultimately, was ultimately fired from this, uh, um, from this position, having not successfully transformed, uh, uh, transformed the, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the, fortunes, uh, the fortunes of the team. But Karadzic, by the, by the end of the 1980s, Karadzic was becoming increasingly interested um, in politics, uh, um, and in particularly in Serbian politics and Serbia's fate uh, within uh, Bosnia, but within Yugoslavia more generally. Um, so as this sort of transformation occurred at the end of the 80s, the beginning of the 1990s, um, as the Communist Party lost its grip throughout Yugoslavia, and as new political factions and new political parties and forces emerged, um, Karadzic became, uh, uh, you know, so segued out of medicine, um, out of these intellectual circles, and into Serbian politics. Um, and he rose to the leadership, uh, um, of, as I say, of the Bosnia, as the, S the SBS, um, the political party uh, which represented Bosnian Serb interests uh, within, uh, uh, within Bosnia. Now, Karadzic uh, um, was very similar in his attitudes. Uh, um, he, he was kind of, a, you know, he, he was a Serbian nationalist. Um, and his attitudes uh, about the best future, the best direction for, uh, um, uh, for the Bosnian Serbs uh, were very similar to those of Milosevic. And they were very similar uh, to those of the leadership 
uh, um, of the Serb minority within Croatia. That, that, that is to say uh, um, that as Yugoslavia collapsed, uh, um, as the state uh, disintegrated, um, Karadzic came to believe uh, that the best circumstances, the best, uh, uh, the best uh, um, fate for his people, uh, for the Bosnian Serb people, uh, would be to remain together in an enlarged Serbian state. Now, he came to that idea uh, eventually. Um, initially, and again, very much like Milosevic, it had been Karadzic's hope uh, that Yugoslavia would survive, uh, that Milosevic would emerge uh, um, as the most important figure uh, within this, uh, uh, within this uh, state, um, and in this way the Serbs would remain together uh, um, as one group. But as this started to uh, um, started to disintegrate, started to collapse, uh, Karadzic also sort of changed his thinking um, and decided that the best f fate, uh, uh, the best circumstances for uh, uh, for the Serbs were to be sort of joined in an enlarged Serbian state. Now, th there was a brief period when he was elected, uh, um, uh, but before uh, Bosnia declared its independence, we'll, we'll come to that in a minute, um, and before the conflict started, uh, um, there was a brief period uh, where Karadzic, uh, Izetbegovic, and the, uh, the, Cro the, Cro the Bosnian Croat leader, Marta Bovan, uh, uh, we'll come to him in a minute, uh, um, were together in a kind of political coalition, a very awkward uh, um, and a very uh, tense one. And that was from sort of, you know, 1991 up until the spring of 1992, which is when the war started in, uh, um, in, uh, um, in Bosnia. Now, during this time, uh, uh, Kadijic was being a very bad, if you like, a coalition partner. Um, he wasn't playing uh, the political game particularly fairly, and it was very clear that he was encouraging uh, uh, the Bosnian Serbs uh, to do very much what had been what their uh, uh, co-nationals had been doing in Croatia, uh, which is to say, sort of set up barricades, uh, set up autonomous regions, arm themselves, and, and prepare for what Kadijic believed would be an inevitable breakaway. Uh, 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 when the Serbian communities within Bosnia uh, uh, would abandon Bosnia and would turn um, to the east and turn towards uh, uh, turn towards Serbia, so uh, Izetbegovic and Kadijic uh, uh, um, uh, were political partners, if you like, uh, uh, during nineteen ninety one and up to the spring of nineteen ninety two. Uh, but Kadijic was a very uh, a sort of bad faith uh, uh, partner. Uh, um, you know, he was in the parliament in Bosnia. Uh, um, he was negotiating with Izetbegovic, but at the same time, he was kind of threatening uh, uh, um, to pull away from the country. And he was also encouraging uh, uh, um, the Bosnian Serbs to arm themselves uh, uh, um, and to sort of resist, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the rule of Sarajevo. And for Kadijic, this was very much a clash of civilizations. Uh, um, he claimed that the Bosnian Serbs could not possibly live together uh, in the same country uh, um, as the Bosnian Muslims. Uh, um, uh, that they would not accept Bosnian independence if it was offered to them, which of course eventually it was. Uh, um, and if that happened, uh, uh, they would create violence of the kind uh, uh, that was now being seen in, uh, uh, that had been seen in Slovenia uh, uh, and was now being seen in, uh, um, in Croatia. Uh, um, so he was, he was, you know, he, he, he was not a, a, um, a particularly uh, a good political partner uh, um, in, uh, in this in the initial period. 1991 to 1992. Okay, let's jump to slide number six very briefly. Uh, the Bosnian, the Bosnian Croat, uh, 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 the Bosnian Croats, the smallest of the three uh, uh, largest uh, uh, ethnic groups, so about seventeen percent. Most of them based in Herzegovina, which is the western part of uh, uh, um, of today's Bosnia. Uh, um, uh, the uh, the political leadership in uh, Bosnia in, in amongst the Bosnian Croats. Uh, was another branch uh, um, of Tudjman's party, the HDZ, the Croatian Democratic Union. Um, and although, uh, um, at least initially, uh, the party leader in Bosnia, a man called Mata Boban, um, although he didn't call uh, um, in the way that Karadzic did um, for the separation of the Croats uh, um, and them to join uh, an enlarged Croatian state, um, it was very clear uh, that Boban uh, uh, was, you know, a very close political and eventually also a military ally uh, um, of uh, Tudjman and of Croatia. Um, so he was also in this uh, uh, um, uh, uh, coalition movement, uh, um, but he was also not a particularly good partner uh, uh, for, uh, for Izetbegovic. He was somebody who was looking across the border 
um, across the Herzegovinian border over to Croatia and thinking that maybe uh, um, his country's future was also uh, uh, wrapped up in uh, uh, wrapped up in uh, this place. Okay, uh, um, so let's come to let's come to slide seven. Uh, um, so what, what this meant was the following thing: uh, um, at the end of nineteen ninety one and, and the beginning of nineteen ninety two, uh, um, Yugoslavia is collapsing. Uh, Slovenia and Croatia have broken away. They declared independence, um, and their declarations of independence have been accepted. Excuse me, accepted. Uh, uh, by the European Union, by the European Community, they've acknowledged and they and they've sort of uh, um, they they've, they've sort of accepted those uh, those declarations. This puts uh, um, this this kind of puts Izabegovic in quite a difficult position. Uh, um, you know, he, 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 it could it could relatively you know with, with a relatively small margin of error, it could be said. Uh, um, that ideally, um, in the best of all possible worlds, uh, the Bosnian Muslims would have preferred that Yugoslavia would have survived and they would have stayed within that state co that state federation. Um, and the reason for this, of course, is that they don't have a large uh, 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 second republic, a large sort of uh, a national group outside of their borders. Uh, um, you know, the Bosnian Serbs had Serbia, the Bosnian Croats had Croatia, uh, but the Bos Bosnian Muslims, although they were the largest group uh, um, within Bosnia, they didn't have anywhere else to look. There was no Muslim state elsewhere uh, uh, that they might look to. Now, so Izabegovic perhaps would have preferred uh, uh, um, that Yugoslavia would have survived. However, uh, uh, given the way things were going, uh, um, it was not a particularly attractive option uh, for Izabegovic to remain uh, within a rump Yugoslavia, which is to say a Yugoslavia without Croatia, without Slovenia, uh, uh, um, and now ruled over essentially by Milosevic. Uh, this was not a particularly attractive option, as it had not been an attractive option uh, for the Slovenes or for the Croats. Now, the alternative, uh, um, the one that was being encouraged and was being offered by the international community, was hardly ideal either. It was far from perfect. Um, the alternative was that Bosnia would become an independent state. Uh, um, that it would follow the rules of secession uh, that, but that, that Slovenia and Croatia had already taken. Um, it would put this question in the form of a referendum uh, to the Bosnian people, uh, um, and depending on their decision, they would also decide uh, uh, what the future of the state would be. Now, that was also, uh, as I say, not an ideal question, not an ideal situation for Izabegovic. And the reason for that uh, um, is that he could see uh, uh, that if Bosnia did declare its independence, there would be huge trouble, uh, particularly from the Bosnian Serb uh, uh, minority. Kadijic had made it very clear uh, um, that he did not want the Bosnian Serbs to be part of an independent Bosnian state. Uh, um, Kadijic had sort of claimed uh, that this state would just become a Muslim uh, 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 fundamentalist uh, uh, state. Um, uh, that the uh, Serbs did not want to live in a, in a country where the majority uh, were another group, uh, uh, that given the choice, they would prefer to stay in Yugoslavia. And if they could not have that, then they would want to break away uh, um, from the Bosnian state uh, and integrate themselves uh, with an expanded Serbia. So th that, that other option, uh, uh, um, also not ideal, uh, um, uh, uh, was, you know, so, you know, was also one that was very taxing and very troubling for Izabegovic. So he really had a Hobson's choice here. Uh, um, you know, the, the, the notion that, they, that, that Bosnia would stay within what was left of Yugoslavia was becoming increasingly untenable. But at the same time, uh, um, if the country broke away uh, from Yugoslavia uh, um, and became an independent state, uh, um, he would have, at the very least, a lot of trouble uh, um, from this sizable Serbian minority, which was now led by Kalajic, um, a very radical kind of nationalist figure. Now, in March 1992, um, Izabegovic bites the bullet, uh, essentially forced to do so. Uh, um, and we can turn to slide number eight. Uh, um, he puts the question of Bosnian independence uh, to the Bosnian people, to the people of the Republic of Bosnia, uh, um, in the form of a referendum question. And the referendum question uh, goes along the following lines. Are you in favour of a sovereign and independent uh, Bosnia Herzegovina, a state of equal citizens of nation, nations of Muslims, uh, uh, Serbs, Croats and others who live in it? So that, that, that referendum was held in March 1992. Um, and the result was a resounding yes. Uh, um, of the people who voted, <coughs> 
99.7 uh, voted yes, which is to say they voted in favor of, uh, um, of independence. However, just like in the Croatian case, uh, uh, the Bosnian Serbs en masse, as they had been instructed to do um, by their political leadership, by Kadijic, uh, um, uh, vetoed, boycotted this vote. It meant that only 64% uh, um, of the population of Bosnia uh, voted. But of that 64%, Almost all of them uh, voted in favor of uh, uh, Bosnia becoming an independent state. Uh, during this uh, referendum campaign, uh, Kadijic was fulminating uh, um, in the Bosnian parliament uh, um, about the likelihood uh, um, of secession. And kind of he knew, he realized uh, uh, that the non-Serbs within Bosnia would vote on, and block en masse uh, um, in, favor of, uh, um, in favor of independence. So Kadicic was really furious, uh, uh, banging the table uh, um, and essentially threatening uh, uh, Izzet Begovic, threatening the Bosnian Muslims, um, that if they were to break away uh, from Yugoslavia, if this country uh, uh, was to secede, was to declare its independence, um, it would mean conflict, it would mean war. Uh, um, and, you know, these, these threats, these, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, these, uh, uh, these, these claims... Uh, uh, were more than just postures, were more than just posing on the part of Kadijic. Uh, as I said, the Serbian minority, uh, the Serbian uh, municipalities had been barricading themselves in, just as they had done in Croatia. Uh, um, they'd been declaring autonomous zones, autonomous regions within the country, uh, um, and they were also threatening violence should this decision be taken. So Izzet Begovic in a very difficult position, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, with no good options and eventually opting to sort of go down this, uh, uh, this route. Now, this was, of course, the referendum was a resounding yes, 99.7, uh, uh, as I said. And then in April, uh, I think April the 2nd, so uh, as it happens, today is the anniversary of, of, of that. Uh, um, the, uh, the Bosnian uh, uh, Republic under Izzet Begovic uh, declared independence. Uh, um, Kadijic promptly stormed out of uh, uh, parliament, retreated uh, uh, um, to uh, a place in the mountains called Pale, which became his uh, uh, military and political headquarters. Uh, uh, um, and essentially the war immediately began. Uh, uh, there was a peace rally in Sarajevo uh, um, and it was fired upon uh, by Serbian snipers and this was the beginning of the Bosnian war. Now, we'll talk much more about this conflict, which ultimately would be the most deadly, the deadliest conflict uh, um, of, the, uh, um, of, the, uh, of, of the wars of Yugoslav secession. Uh, um, we'll talk about how this uh, conflict unfolded. Uh, um, we'll talk about the key sort of battlegrounds. Uh, we'll talk about the international community. Uh, we'll talk about all of the sort of the dimensions of this, uh, um, of this conflict. Uh, but for the time being, uh, um, I hope that now it's kind of clear uh, why uh, uh, the Bosnian conflict would be so violent, why it would be so protracted, and why it would be so sort of complicated. Uh, um, again, if we go back to the first slide, slide number one, uh, um, you can see uh, the complex ethnic position, you know, the different municipalities, uh, the different ethnic groups within, uh, within Bosnia. This is a very kind of varied uh, um, and, a very, uh, uh, and a very complex picture. At the same time, uh, uh, um, the war aims... Uh, the stated goals of Kadijic's uh, 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 political and national policies to create this expanded uh, uh, Serbian state will involve necessarily uh, forcibly removing uh, uh, um, from Serbian areas all non-Serb groups, uh, uh, you know, to, to so-called ethnically cleanse uh, uh, the territory uh, that they're in control of. Um, so, you know, for the time being, we won't go too far into that. We'll start talking about that next week and the week after uh, when we come back to the conflict in Bosnia. Um, but for the time being, uh, um, I, I guess what we've done today is we've understood how the conflict started uh, um, and we have began to talk about some of the reasons why this conflict uh, um, would become so complicated and so violent. Okay, thank you.